Uh, this is part two of a message I started last week. And uh, I believe Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus delivers. And Jesus breaks chains. And he is a jailbreaking Jesus. And he's got a jailbreak for you today. Come on. He's got a jailbreak for you. There's been a jailbreak. And you are set free. Chains have been broken. And you are free. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. And in the book of Micah, it says the breaker has already gone before you. And he's breaking open the way for you. Amen. <clears throat> And I shared uh, just my heart last week, and I barely got into the notes, uh, but I still feel the same way, and I can't get past when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, when I, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I could dance, 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 dance. <clears throat> Oftentimes we get so... Uh, so um, uh, uh, just acclimated to freedom, uh, that we forget that we have been set free. We forget that Jesus breaks chains. We forget that he heals. We forget that he delivers. We forget that he's saved. And I believe that there's a great awakening happening in the church right now where we're waking back up to the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul said it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. And the shoes of the gospel. In other words, you can walk in the power of God. You. Every one of us can walk in the power of God. We don't have to have a special title. We don't have to have a special uh, name tag. We don't have to have a special certificate. Every one of us can walk in the power of God. Amen? Amen. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It is for freedom Christ has set us free. He broke you free. He broke the jail. <coughs> You remember when Paul and Silas, they were thrown in jail for preaching the gospel, for walking in power, for walking in anointing, and declaring that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers. They arrested them, they beat them, they put them in the inner prison. I've preached, many of you know this message that I've preached many times. Uh, they put them in the inner prison, in the inner dungeon, which means they literally put them uh, in the place where all the septic uh, drained down into. That's where they had them. Now, some of you think you've gone through some bad things, and you've gone through some tough times. That's really bad, right? And they were, they were beaten with open wounds and sores, and they were chained to the wall. <coughs> and not once did they think about complaining. They begin to worship, they begin to praise, and they begin to lift up a sound of joy in the midst of hard times. I'm telling you, the church needs to wake up. We've got it so easy, we've got it so good, but I'm telling you, we need to wake up to the fact that the devil really is out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we're called to be a voice of freedom. And we're called to fight for freedom. It is for freedom that we've been set free. Amen. They begin to worship the Lord and God began to tap his foot to their tune. And all of a sudden that, that, that music came through the, the atmosphere to the stratosphere all the way up into the throne room of heaven. And God began to tap his foot until everything on earth started to shake and quake and the whole jail broke. And there was a great jailbreak. I'm not talking about a, a, a chain broke. I'm talking about the doors came off. The very foundation, the Bible says, the very foundation of the prison was broken. I'm telling you, Jesus is a breaker. He's come to break everything the devil tries to chain and bind the people of God in. Say freedom. I believe God's called us to focus on freedom right now. God wants to break you free, break your children free, break your generations free. It is for freedom that he set us free. And let me tell you, God looks past just one generation. He looks into the generations. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 
Joseph, and you can go all the way down the line. I just believe this is a day for the church to come back to the roots of our faith. Come back to the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's a chain-breaking champion. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. You should be able to quote this. It says, for this purpose. For what purpose? God never does anything without a purpose. Everything God does, he does on purpose. On purpose. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. What was that purpose? That he might destroy the works of the devil. So powerful. You know what our job is as the body of Christ? To continue the ministry of Jesus. To continue to destroy the works of the devil. God could have created man anywhere. You've seen the new uh, uh, James Webb uh, Hubble telescope pictures. It's not the Hubble, it's the James Webb telescope. (coughs) The most graphic, clear, uh, uh, super HD pictures uh, of of space, deep space, uh, 130 billion light years away with clarity like we've never known before. And, you know, God could have put man anywhere, but he chose the third rock from the sun, the place where he imprisoned Lucifer and a third of the angels that rebelled against God. That was that ice prison that he put them in, and God said, right there is where I want to create my greatest creation of all. I'm going to make man in my own image, in my own likeness. I'm going to put him right there. (coughs) Did God do that so that we would be uh, tormented by Lucifer and the fallen angels? No. So that we would be the tormentors of the devil. He said it in the Garden of Eden. Well, we might bruise our heel, but we'll crush his head. Well, I thought he was saying that about Jesus. He was saying that about Jesus. But how many of you know Jesus is the head of the church? And the feet are still not in the head, no matter how you look at it. In other words, we're called to crush the devil. What does Romans 16, 19 say? And the God of peace shall soon crush Satan underneath your feet. We're not called to be tormented and just accept torment we're called to be the devil's tormentors we're not here to say let's just go uh get a little holy huddle over here encourage one another and sit back and and pray that the rapture happens now no there's not one point in the bible where where truth doesn't prevail there's not one place in the Bible where the word of God becomes weak and doesn't, it's not effective against the powers of hell. In fact, in Psalm 149, it says, this honor have all his saints to be able to execute the vengeance of God against his enemies. Mm. This honor. See, our job is to continue the work of Jesus Christ destroying the works of the devil. I'm just giving you a quick overview of what I preached last week. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said, behold, I give you power. The word in the Greek is is exousia. I give you exousia over all the dunamis of the enemy, the explosive power of the enemy. And so dunamis, we get our word dynamite from that. It means uh, uh, to explosive power. He said, behold, I give you exousia to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the dunamis of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And when you look at that, in the original 
language, it says, Behold, I make you a powerful monarch, a king. That's what Jesus said. That's what exousia means. He said, I give you the authority and the power of a king. I make you, it's the authority and the power of a monarch. I make you a monarch in my name. That's what an ambassador does. Walks in the authority of the kingdom that they represent. I make you a monarch, a king, to rule over all of every explosion of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Listen, it's God's desire for us to live in freedom. And every place we run into the works of the devil in other people's lives, we have the authority to overpower everything that he's done in someone else's life. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus delivers. If you cannot turn on a computer without going to some pornography site, I'm telling you, you don't have to have condemnation. You don't have to hang on to a devil. You don't have to allow the enemy's uh, a lordship in your life in that way. You don't have to walk out of this building without freedom today. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus will deliver you from that strong hold of the enemy in your life. <coughs> it's not the will of God that we are bound in anything that the devil has to offer. It's not the plan of God for any of us to walk around with bondage or chains. He's a chain-breaking Jesus. No sickness, no disease has power over you. When Jesus received 39 stripes on his body, he did it for the healing of the church. In other words, you're as saved as you are healed, and you are as healed as you are saved. It was all done in the exact same work. <coughs> Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus delivers. Any infirmity, any oppression, any anxiety, anything that the enemy of your soul would want to overpower you with, the yoke of the enemy uh, that he's tried to put upon you, I don't care how pretty or how enticing it may seem, it is not the plan of God for your life, and Jesus is here to give you a jailbreak today. <clears throat> you know... Some yokes of bondage are just assumed that they belong to you too because they happened in your grandparents and they happened in your parents. Let me talk about yokes of bondage for a minute. Poverty. Well, <clears throat> I, just, I didn't come from a rich family. Well, let me just tell you, first of all, you are born again in a new family. And when I was born again, I don't know about you, but when I was born again, my DNA changed. I, I was translated out of the kingdom of darkness and all the power and all the authority and all the, the bondage and all that the kingdom of darkness had to offer into the kingdom of light. Where there is no bondage, where there is no sickness, where there is no disease, there's only freedom in Christ. But some people, even in the church, because grandpa was poor, grandma was poor, they had a dirt floor, and they were poor. <clears throat> Mom and dad didn't have anything, and so therefore, uh, it's my lot in life. No. Or mental illness, or, 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 or mental sickness. Well, you know, grandpa had that, he was weird. And, you know, my mom and dad, they were weird too. So therefore, I kind of have that thing running in me. No, you do not. No. You've got royal blood flowing in your veins right now. And you are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have been redeemed from the curse. And right now, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You're a new creation in Christ. Old things have been deceased, are deceased now. They've passed away. Behold, that means look and see. 
You've got to look and see this stuff. Behold, all things have become new. In other words, all that old stuff is no longer, it no longer has access to you. Your bloodline is now the bloodline of Almighty God. Your DNA has changed, and you now are a part of a royal family of God. You are a royal priesthood, a a holy nation, a chosen generation, a people belonging to God. Simplicity of the gospel. Any programming, any sickness, any disease, any addiction, any infirmity, any cancer, any diabetes, or whatever that may have been programmed in your former DNA is no longer there. Come on, that deserves some praise. (laughs) Tell somebody next to you, you're redeemed from the curse. And just because the enemy got away with it before, in former generations, it doesn't mean uh, that he, he can get away with it anymore. Mental torment, depression, uh, you know, I've seen it in, in relatives of mine. I've seen them go through it. I've seen uh, 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 their children go through it. I've seen their children go through it. And listen, I don't accept any of that. It stops at the bloodline and the blood of Jesus. You know, the Bible says you're surrounded with a wall a fire and a hedge of blood. The blood of Jesus surrounds you. The enemy cannot cross that bloodline. And when the enemy comes to try to say uh, depression or things like that, let me just tell you what the Bible says. You have to have the Bible in, inside of you, by the way. The Bible says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. If you keep your mind on the Lord, the Bible says casting down every high thing and every vain imagination that rises up against the knowledge of the word of God, bringing into captivity every thought under the obedience of Christ. you got to fight a little bit. You know, I was talking with Pastor Tracy earlier today. And, you know, the thought occurred to me that David fought his whole life. His whole life. He was never outside of a war zone. Think about that. And I thought, I relate. (laughs) I've had to fight my whole life. Powers of darkness. And let me just say, if you're the first one serving the Lord in your family, you're standing up against all kinds of stuff, and your fight's going to be greater than the next generation. But good for you. Somebody has to stand up and say, it goes this far and no more. Come on. I was thinking about that. David never got out of the battle zone. He fought his whole life. Let me just tell you, if you want your promised land, there's a giant there you're going to have to fight. There may be several giants you're going to have to fight. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Isn't that right? Bonnie and Josh, who fought all the way through and now are homeowners. You got to keep your mind and your spirit filled with the Word of God. It's very simple. Read the Bible. Very simple. Pick a scripture. Pick, uh, let me just tell you stop trying to swallow a mountain in one gulp. Take one scripture and think about it all week long. One verse. If you do that, at the end of the year, you'll have 52 nuggets of truth so established in you that the enemy is in trouble anytime he comes around you. And then let me encourage you in this, pray in the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, listen, before you do anything else, you're going you're gonna to turn the world upside down, but before you do anything else, Wait for the promise of the Father. Don't you even consider doing anything until you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they waited in the upper room for 10 days. You know, historical documents say there were more than 700 people following Jesus when he went up into the 
uh, when he ascended into the heavens, more than 700 people were there and heard those words. And they all went to Jerusalem. How many were in the upper room uh, 10 days later? 120. That means a lot of them decided, this, I don't know about this. I'm going to go do this. I got something else really pressing. <coughs> Pray in the Holy Spirit. You can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If you try to do it without the Holy Spirit, it's not going to work. Not even Jesus did it without the Holy Spirit. When you do that, you will not be conformed to this world, but you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mental torment is crushed under your feet. You start understanding the power of Jesus the breaker. He's a chain breaker. He's a jail breaker. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Man, I'm almost out of time. It says, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. That phrase, as his custom was, <clears throat> in the original text, means his habit. His habit. He made church habitual. We would do good to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and go to church. I was glad, David said, when they said to me, let's turn on the computer. No, that's not what he said. He said, let's go to the house of, of the Lord. David wanted the presence of God so bad, he wanted to, to make part of his house uh, the, the, where the Ark of the Covenant was. That's how, he, how much he loved being in the house of the Lord. He wanted his house to be the house of the Lord. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. I just want to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, You know, David said to Nathan the prophet, I want to build a, a beautiful mansion. And I want it to be a part of the palace here. I want it right off the side, right there, so that I can get up and run right into the house of the Lord. And Nathan said, go ahead and do it, David. And then God said, wait a minute, tell him don't do that. <coughs> you can't build me a house, David. Why? Because you, you've been a warrior your whole life. You, you've never been out of war. Your hands are bloody, but your son will build the house. But I'll build you a house that will last all the way to the Messiah. Jesus... as was his custom, went into the church. That was his habit. Jesus loved the gathering of believers of like precious faith. He loved it. He, he made it a habitual part of his life. The Bible actually says, <clears throat> forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, and the much more as you see the day approaching. How many of you would agree that we are in the last days? And the much more applies. And if I were the devil, I would create some kind of scary thing to keep the church apart. Because united they stand, divided... I'm thankful for live streaming. I'm thankful that we can reach, we reach people all over the world every week. 52 nations we reach. It's powerful. I'm so glad. But I'm just telling you, there's something powerful about coming together. Something dynamic happens when we come together that can happen no other time, no other way. One would put 1,000 to flight, two will put 10,000. Jesus, as was his custom, it should be your custom too. Somebody said amen, I heard it. Do you know Isaiah 65 and verse 8? While we're on the subject, 
It says the new wine is found in the cluster of the grapes. The new wine is not found in a grape. A lone grape behind a computer. A grape. No, the new wine is found in the cluster of the grapes. So Jesus, as was his custom, on the Sabbath day he went to church. And he stood up to read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I can just see Jesus emphasizing me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord or the year of jubilee. And then he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The year of Jubilee, let me just quickly say this. Uh, Every seventh day is the Sabbath. Every seventh year was a a year of rest uh, for the land. And so that was called the Jubilee. And every um, every time there was a rest... Uh, things reverted back to the original owner. There was restoration. There was recovery. And then <clears throat> four, seven times seven is 49. On the 50th year was the great jubilee. Where, where er, all, all stops were pulled. Everything reverted. All wealth was returned. Everything on a gr- much grander scale was great jubilee. And Jesus literally said, I am Jubilee. I save, I heal, I deliver, I restore. I do all that this says, I am Jesus. I am the Messiah that you're looking for. I am the one Isaiah was prophesying about. I am anointed to bring freedom. I am anointed to bring deliverance and salvation and good news to the poor. I am anointed to bring total reformation and restoration to the hearts and lives of all mankind. I am Jesus, the Messiah. He was declaring the anointing is here. The anointing to destroy every yoke of bondage. I've come to break every chain. I've come to destroy every prison. I, the good news is I save, I heal, and I deliver. I am the Messiah. I'm going to fast forward in my notes. That's what I'm doing when I'm doing this. I'm fast forwarding. <clears throat> You know, it's not the plan of God that anybody be a slave to any, anybody or anything. Bondage, addiction, whatever it is. The only thing we are servants to is we are servants to the Son of God. We are servants of the Most High God. And God has not designed you and I to be slaves to anything or anyone. If you're addicted to anything today, I'm going to say it again. Jesus is a chain breaker. Not only will he break the chain, he'll destroy the yoke. He'll break the prison. He'll make sure there's nothing that can hold you in bondage. Now let me tell you, there's a huge difference between sitting in a prison cell with the door locked and shut and sitting in a prison cell with the door open. You have to do your part too. Jesus can set you free right now. He came to proclaim liberty and freedom to those who are captive. That literally in the the Greek says, he came as a jailbreaker. He didn't just come to, to open the prison door, he came to destroy the prison. You can sit in the rubble of that prison and stay captive there if you want. Bishop Hammond, who turns 88 this month. 
the end of this month, he would say, uh, you can hang on to your pets if you want to. You can hold on to demonic things in your life if you want to. But God wants you free. Get rid of your pets. He's not talking about dogs and cats. He's talking about pets, demons. Isaiah 10, verse 27, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing. The anointed one and his anointing. Jesus said, I'm anointed to bring freedom, to bring liberty, to bring healing, to open the blind eyes, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dumb talk, the dead are raised back to life again. That's what the anointing will do for you. Behold, I make you a monarch. I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. It is for freedom that he set us free. I want to challenge you today. Do a personal inventory of your life. Is something lording over you that you need freedom from? Some people are they're just bound to a whiskey bottle. Well, my grandpa was a drunk. My dad was a drunk. It's my lot in life. No, it is not. You're no longer in that bloodline. You have a new bloodline. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I certainly am not here to condemn anybody. Well, I started on these pain pills a long time ago, and I just can't get free from them. Yes, you can. Jesus was proclaiming, I'm the freedom that you're looking for. I've got the power to set you free. And then in setting you free, I want to empower you to be a liberator, to be one that sets others free. Again, let me just tell you, if you're waiting for a a cemetery, I mean seminary degree, if you're waiting for some dead religious certificate, You're waiting on the wrong thing. It's time for jailbreaks everywhere we go. I could just, I've got so many notes, I'm going to save them for next week. This is a a month of freedom. Let me just settle on this. Deuteronomy chapter 28. You can read about it when you get home. It talks about the blessing of the covenant. It says, God caused you to be the head and never the tail, above and never beneath. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. Blessed in the city, blessed in the country. Oh, thank you very much. Blessed in your family, blessed in your work. Blessed in your business, blessed in your investments, financial blessing and continual increase. Let me tell you this part, blessed in your marriage. But I could really take some time preaching on this one. Part of the curse was an attack on your marriage. But part of the, if you read it in Deuteronomy 28, God says, I will make your marriage work. I'll protect your marriage. Do you know God wants to bless your marriage and he promises to protect your marriage? God's plan always was and always will be one man, one woman. They get together, they discover the beauty of life together that God has prepared for them and they live that life. It's always been God's plan. That's the blessing of the covenant. Part of the curse was marrying the wrong person and having to deal with the results of being married to the wrong person with them worshiping their idols and foreign ungodly practices entering into the covenant people of God. But God promises those who will walk in covenant with him, he will richly bless them with the right spouse and they will remain faithful to you all your life. 
Some, some people don't realize that is actually in your Bible. God's blessing on your marriage. <clears throat> well, been too many years now, Brother Marty. Fooey. Don't buy those lies. God's got a man after his own heart for you if you're a lady. If you're a male and you're not married yet, God's got a Proverbs 31 woman for you. Let me just tell you what that means. Freedom. See, it's for freedom he has set us free. Would you stand with me today? The first thing Jesus started to say was, good news to the poor. I know this firsthand. You know me. You know my history. I grew up in a very wealthy family, but when my dad passed away, we went into deep poverty. I lived in an abandoned house with my nine brothers and sisters and my mom. We had nothing. Very quickly, the vultures came around and absorbed every dollar my mom had, and we had nothing. We lived in a in, in an abandoned house. It was terrible. We had no electricity. We had no food. We had no money. <clears throat> and God reached down his hand through a church, a local church, and began to change that whole picture. And I learned about God's covenant of prosperity. Jesus has come to break every chain of poverty and lack and insufficiency. And if you're dealing with lack and poverty, I'm here to declare to you today that Jesus today will destroy that yoke off of your life. Amen? He'll prosper you. He'll prosper your family. He'll prosper your children. He'll prosper your grandchildren I've been young and now I am old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Why? Because he's a covenant keeping God. Lift your hands with me today. Father, I thank you right now that poverty and lack is broken off of all your people today. In the name of Jesus, I declare it. I declare in Jesus' name that we are the blessed and not the cursed. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath ever. And the anointing is here to liberate us, to deliver us, to destroy every yoke of bondage. Father, whatever yoke the enemies tried to put on your people, I destroy it by your anointing today. Men are free. Women are free. Jesus, you are the liberator, the lover of our soul. I declare every attack of the enemy broken off of your people now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I decree increase. I decree sufficiency and more than enough. Through the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise today. I'm going to close with this. 27 years ago, we moved here, Pastor Tracy and I. And part of our assignment, God spoke to me, was to destroy poverty and lack off of this region and off of God's people. You know, we have videos of when we first moved here, how underdeveloped and poor most of this region was. There were no big stores, there were no big malls. In fact, if there was a mall, it was closed down, it was a ghost town. And we continue to decree the blessing of the Lord over this region. And now Middle Tennessee is in Nashville and Gallatin and Hendersonville is one of the hottest places to move to in the entire nation. Everybody wants to move here. Everybody wants to walk in this blessing. And let me tell you this. God told me he would restore all that the palmer worm, the canker worm, and the locust had eaten away. And I believe we are in the beginning, beginning phases of this blessing overtaking us. <clears throat> let me encourage you in, in, in saying this. Buy land. Buy properties. Buy trailers. Buy slums, 
buy anything you can buy right now because property values are going to go so sky high. And God's going to bless his people. It'll skyrocket. Right now you can buy commercial buildings so cheap because people are mostly working from home. They're not in commercial buildings. But that's not going to always be the case. I'm just giving you a little nugget of of, uh, the word of the Lord over the region. God is going to restore in this region and bless this region unlike we have ever known. And you watch how God prospers his people in the process. Amen? Come on, it is for freedom that God wants you free. And God wants you to be the one that controls the wealth. Amen? Come on, give the Lord some praise today. Amen? Amen. I could take the rest of the day uh, just preaching about what the Lord has shown me. And, and next Sunday is going to be just as fiery. I've got more to, to pick up right where we left off. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for your grace upon our lives. Thank you, Father, that you are the great shepherd and you shepherd your people. You look out for us. You keep us. You tend to your flock. And I release the blessing of covering and protection over your people today. Those that are here, those that are are not here that would love to be here or that should be here. Father, we speak that covering and that protection over them now. And we bless you as we dismiss from this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you Friday night online and next Sunday right here at 4 p.m. If you need prayer, please come down front. I'm happy to pray with you. God bless.